Hey guys, it's God Bars here, the self-proclaimed hip-hop historian, and this is the 166th episode of my series where I grab a vinyl from my collection, talk about why I love it, what influence it has, and what its place is in the grand scheme of hip-hop. So this is an album that's come up in passing a few times recently, especially in my video for The Unseen, Mad Lib's debut under the Quasimodo alias which I'll link down below if you want to get some more insight into that rapper-producer's top-tier catalog post the turn of the century. In that review, I talked about how Madlib got his foot in the door with Stone's Throw Records, assisting its founder, Peanut Butter Wolf, in his long-term goal of creating the perfect, diverse, underground hip-hop label, which he undoubtedly succeeded in, and now it's grown into something that includes a lot more than just hip-hop, as to this day, PB Wolf is still recruiting new artists and MCs and keeping an ear to the streets. This never-ending pursuit of quality for a wide array of genres and styles is part of the reason that Stone's Throw has always been literally my dream label, and has been for as long as I can remember. Honestly, I don't know if there's another label in my head that even comes close. If I was forced to pick one, it would probably be Backwood Studios. But just to be clear, that isn't to say there aren't dozens or even hundreds of dope progressive record labels with interesting and stacked rosters. For example, while you don't often hear people's preference of labels discussed nearly as often as favorite rappers, producers, or DJs, there's still a good number of more underground and alternative outfits that fall on that same side of the aisle as Backwoods or Stone's Throw. While certain titans of this category, like Dap Jux or Raucous Records, have obviously been debunked and retired as record companies for some time now, I still want to share a good handful of labels like that that I've enjoyed over the years and meant a lot to me personally. Some of these labels that had a big impact on my hip-hop listening experience include Rhyme Sayers, Big Dada, Anticon, Brain Feeder, Fool's Gold, Fondulum Records, Mellow Music Group, Sub Pop, and Electra Records, just to name a few. Loop Pack was a West Coast trio made up of Mad Lib, Wild Child, and DJ Romes. And while they did have an unofficial 2004 project titled The Lost Tapes, as well as their Loop Digga EP a decade later in 2014, unfortunately, this is kind of one of those one and done acts that only have a single real full length album to their name. Though they hit it so far out of the park with sound pieces to antidote, they managed to leave a giant indent in the underground and alternative hip hop scenes in California, to the point you can still see heavy remnants of it to this day. This wasn't an insanely uncommon occurrence as a number of legendary rappers or crews from the 90s and 2000s put out one game-changing beloved LP and then either disbanded completely, took a hiatus, or just weren't really able to recreate or live up to the initial success that the debut had garnered. Like with Main Source, who had a classic debut LP with 1991's Breaking Adams, which I've actually discussed in depth on the channel before as well. Of course, it often gets referenced as the project that introduced Nas to the world, but the true mastermind behind that entire experience was really Large Professor. And unfortunately, due to his departure from the trio after that first release, Main Source had a bit of trouble defining themselves as artists after that point. But I wouldn't really put LP in that same category. They're the kind of act that stayed amicable to this day as far as I know. And it was just a number of uncontrollable factors that led to each artist pursuing their own solo career outside of the trio. To me, this puts them in the same squad as other acts that, for one reason or another, only really have one classic release to their name, but the output was so stellar that we still remember that one release fondly. A few that come to mind are guys like Camp Low, Cannibal Ox, Blackstar, not counting their most recent release, Dino Spectrum, Company Flow, or the DOC. And again, a lot of those artists have released more than one project, they just weren't able to accrue that same grand praise and attention. Loop Pack was a part of the legendary Liquid crew, which included fellow West Coast veterans like Declaim, Exhibit, or of course the Alcoholics who actually kind of gave the pack their first real shot by having them feature on their amazing debut 21 and over, which I'm gonna give its own review a little later in this set of 90s classics. 
One thing everyone in the Liquid crew shared was an affinity for a more traditional New York boom bap inspired method and sound that separated them from the litany of G-Funk that was seeping out of just about every corner of the state. From Compton's Most Wanted and The Dog Pound, to Spice One and DJ Quick, pretty much all of the music dominating the airwaves on this side of the country at the time was, for better or worse, operating with this newfound flavor that separated them from the mecca and the lineage that they were building. Of course, I adore G-Funk and its many offshoots and related subgenres, but arguably just as important were these alternate acts who felt more of a connection to the East Coast sounds and styles. To the point I have to assume that a decent amount of Loot Pack listeners didn't even realize that the trio wasn't from New York when they first heard them. I focused on this pretty regularly in the early days of this page as I feel like it's safe to say without these forward-thinking and risk-taking groups like Hieroglyphics, Freestyle Fellowship, Barside, or Souls of Mischief, we wouldn't have even a quarter of the artistic, inclusive, and progressive community that we have today when it comes to underground hip-hop here in LA. Loot Pack helped open the door for the bus drivers and open mic eagles of the game, because Mad Lib and Wild Child have super unique and creative rapping styles that takes aspects of that jazzy, improvisational method of writing that someone like AC alone takes, but places it firmly on the more grimy and dusty side. This is entirely thanks to Mad Lib, who unsurprisingly handles 100% of the beat making on here, and you even get some moments from Quasimodo, whose official debut wouldn't drop until the next year. It's pretty mind-boggling how ahead of the game this master of his craft was, considering he was still years off from meeting MF Doom and forming Mad Villain, or connecting with Dilla as the duo J-Lib for their 2003 Champion Sound LP. Not to mention being a good 15 years away from teaming up with Freddie Gibbs to release Pinata and Bandana, two of the most critically acclaimed and highly praised albums in modern hip-hop. But make no mistake, as amazing as the instrumentals all across the antidote are, I have to share at least a small snippet from one of Mad Lib's killer verses on here, as him and Wildchild are just spitting their asses off non-stop on this thing. One of my favorite sets of lines comes in the form of, Yo, it's the slang buster. Mad Lib the beat conductor. I hit you off with that ill structure. Cuts ya. Never on the bandwagon at any time. Every day. Every place. Got my pants sagging. For y'all rappers that be strictly bragging, up at the spot, so eager to grab the mic with the breath of a dragon. People be walking around, wagging their tail, tagging along, trying to get their mail wagging. Make me want to disrespect and check, grab that dude's neck and start gagging. I drop a pound of discussion and drop a rhyme to leave you with a concussion and have your whole crew commence to hushing. Down with the master race of MCs who terrorize whoever flies up in their face talking lies. I give a shout to the unseen at the lost gates. While you're making mistakes, we make them hot plates. I mentioned how Mad Lib's alter ego Quasimodo has a few guest spots on here, but we actually get a pretty heaping handful of features on sound pieces, with a mix of peers and contemporaries, including Metaphor, more commonly known as M.E.D., Oh No, Kazi, God's Gift, Defari, Declaim, The Alcoholics, and a fellow LA-based group in a similar vein as the Liquid Crew, Dilated Peoples. When it comes to the extended list of honorable mentions on this one, I think the tracks I want to shout out would have to be Questions, Long Awaited, When I'm on the Mic, Slash B-Boy Theme, Level Zero, The Anthem, Friends vs. Ends, Verbal Experiments Slash Style Wild, Liquid Fusion, we did it slash 20 questions, episodes, loop digger, and want to test. For my top three favorite songs overall, I'm going to go with Answers, Law of Physics, and Hit You With That. Thank you for watching my 166th video. Next time, we're actually going to stay in California to discuss one of the only West Coast DJs who could arguably rival Mad Lib's influence. So tune in to see the first instrumental LP I've covered in a while, and if you enjoyed, be sure to like, subscribe, and let me know what your favorite songs off this gem of a debut are. Don't forget to have a great day, and I'll see you next time, okay? Alright.
such a thing. Look, look, I stand in the flame of a feeling we call pain. Father's Day mug, little hand shaped the clay carrier planes flew overhead in pockets.